But listen, if they're off market, how can you find a residential assisted living home for sale in your area? In the United States right now, there are 76 million baby boomers. The number one dilemma for these baby boomers, housing. That dilemma can be your opportunity. Welcome to the Assisted Living Network podcast, where you can discover how just one residential assisted living home could secure your financial future forever. Hey, it's Isabel from the Assisted Living Network. Did you know all the good RAL deals are off market? Oh yeah, baby. But listen, if they're off market, how can you find a residential assisted living home for sale in your area? Let's talk about it. It all comes down to one thing, relationships. You have to start dialing, my friend. Start calling people. Start building relationships. Start letting them know what you're looking for, who you are. This helps start the conversation because no one's going to sell their business to you unless they trust that you're going to do right by them. Unless they believe that you care about the business, about the seniors, about the industry as much or more than they do. This business is more than likely their baby. They've put years, days, hours, blood, sweat, tears into this thing and letting it go is tough enough. This is an emotional conversation. Even if they want or need to sell the business, it's still going to be a sensitive time and situation. So be sensitive. We had a student give me a call and he's like, Hey, I I really need to sell my home. You know, I'm ready to get out of this. I'm going through a divorce and I want to get this offloaded so that, you know, it doesn't get held up in the divorce proceedings. And I said, no worries. He said, you know, I, I want to sell, but I don't want it publicized. And I said, of course. So, you know, we went out and we did as we always do when someone gives us a great listing, a home that's successful that we want to get in front of our top level students. And I sent out a very private email blast to just those couple of students in that area who may be looking. Well, he called me back pissed. He was like, absolutely not. Now I'm getting calls from people whose parents are in my home. And I was like, I only said to do a couple people. It was a total private listing. But that's the thing, you guys, when you're looking to sell your business, people don't want it publicized. One of our students, their loved one was in his home. I didn't know that. And it was my bad. I made such a mistake. I should have ran the list by him first to make sure that there was no one, you know, in in that crosshair, but I was totally out of my realm. I, you know, promote these homes all the time to our private groups, to small lists, let them know, Hey, reach out to this person directly. And it kind of screwed them over because then they called and said, should I take my parent out? Right. They also said, can I buy your home? So I was like, isn't it kind of a win-win? But at the end of the day, it's so important to know that most of these deals are going to be happening off market, on the low conversations. People are not going to be publicizing them or putting them out in the public face. They really want this to be a one-on-one type of relationship sale. When you first call, don't just start spouting off about how you want to buy their business and you're looking to get into the industry. You don't know who you're talking to yet. What if it's a caregiver? What if you spook them and they quit thinking that the business is being sold or shut down or now the owner Uh, they're going to be pissed at you. Okay. No, 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 no. Start by making sure that you are talking to the right person. A number one, then you need to make sure that you're letting them know that you are in the industry, not looking to get in, but you are in the industry looking to expand. They may think you want a bunch of free advice and listen, they're not getting paid for their time. And if you are just a looky loo, they're not going to be happy. So respect this and be mindful of it. If they're open to chatting more, go visit. Get your eyes on this thing, okay? You cannot and should not buy a residential assisted living home without walking into the home. You're not going to be able to look through every single corner. You're not going to need to, but you need to get the vibe. You need to get the energy, the level of quality by spending a short amount of time there. And the reality is successful people make decisions quickly. I remember when my dad walked into the first home he purchased, the first residential assisted living home, he did one walkthrough, got the vibe, got the energy and said, this is it. I'm making a deal and gave her that letter of intent right there. Don't get caught up on every little detail. Do you want to be in this business or be considering being in this business? Mm -mm. You want to be in it. 
Listen, off-market RALs are better than publicly listed homes. Know that using sites like BizBuySell or other publicly listed business for sale type websites, they're not going to lead you to good deals. We see more residential assisted livings than ever these days on these sites, but are they good deals? Not usually. If it's publicly listed, you found it, but guess who else did? The adult children who have placed their loved ones in the home, and once they found it, they don't know who the new owner is going to be, so guess what? They pulled their senior loved one out of the home, just like the story, right, of our friend in New Jersey. If you want to make an offer on a publicly listed RAL, you're going to want to lowball them. Not stupidly lowball them, but make it make sense. But it's more than likely not worth what they're listing it for because they don't know how this actually works or they're not working with someone who knows their worth, knows how to value these businesses like the coaches at Residential Assisted Living Academy. When it comes to business valuations, you need to consider if there's no residence, it's not worth anything more than the real estate. The bodies are the income. I know that sounds harsh, but they are the business. So without them, it's worthless as a residential assisted living. It's just a piece of real estate. So sometimes people will say, well, this home is retrofitted. It's ready to go for this. Okay, well, I'm not paying more for that because I could buy a cheaper home and do it all myself and probably make more on it. You are paying for the seniors in the home. And that is the key right there. If they're not full or they're not full with seniors who are paying the rates that you want to see in that home, then it's a no-go. You don't need to be offering them a lot of money. You need to be lowballing them because they don't have a business. They're just selling the real estate. Also keep in mind when you're buying a residential assisted living business that the license may or may not transfer. This is going to depend on the state. So don't let them use that as a selling point unless you know without a shadow of a doubt that it will transfer in your area. Another major thing to note the staff may or may not stay. You may be promised that they will stay, but they don't. And you may not want them to. And those are all things that you need to consider when you're purchasing a home. Things to not forget, you need to make sure that they keep the home at an 80% occupancy at the same rates negotiated during the sale process. Make sure that they sign a non-compete and promise to not take your residence or your staff and make sure that you see two to three years worth of data on the home. All three of those things are major keys and so important. To learn how to value these businesses and what exactly to say on that phone call and how to build a sale agreement, consider coming to the Residential Assisted Living Academy. We host trainings every six to eight weeks in Phoenix, Arizona, and we go through that stuff like line items. It's so important that you know it all. So Come out to Phoenix and join us for a class. Don't forget to like and share this episode and follow us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thanks for listening to the Assisted Living Network.